Hello and welcome you all to this online class of science with me. My name is Abhishek and you all are watching the channel Vigyanam. Here we have came up with a new chapter that is the matters in our surrounding of class 9 NCRT. So let's start the chapter with the introduction that what we have first that everything in the universe is made up of matter. Right? Means everything in the universe is made up of what matters and energy. And so the question arises that what the matter is. Anything which occupies space and have mass is known as what matter. Now matter comes in enormous variety with different shapes, size, texture, color, etc. Now the examples of matters are the plant, animal, food we eat, the stone, even a small drop of water or a small particle of sand is considered as what matter because they all occupy space and have mass but some abstract feeling like sensation love manner attitude thoughts ideas these are not considered as matter because they don't have any space or mass but always remember that universe is made up of what matter and energy since we have seen matter and energy but energy is not considered as matter why because energies are in the form of heat sound and light and we all know that we all are familiar with the heat in our regular life like we can feel the heat so again it comes in the sensation thus these are not matter this is energy now come to the next part that is general characteristics of matter so to define the general characteristics we have so many of points like matter have mass obviously anything which have mass and occupy space is what matter so what is the meaning of that that is as mass or not suppose we have two bricks one is heavy brick and another is a lighter brick so obviously which one is a heavy brick that brick must have more matter in that and the brick which is a lighter brick that brick must have a less matter in that so from this we can understood that the matter has mass secondly suppose I give you a few many books to put you uh, to put those books into your shelf or bookshelf but your bookshelf is already filled up with all the books so will it be possible for you to fill the same books or to fill the new books in the same bookshelf no so this clearly says that matters occupy space isn't it that matters also do what they occupy space now come to the third point that matters have inertia now what the meaning of the inertia since if anybody will be in at the state of rest so it will be in the state of rest or if anybody will be in the state of motion so it will be in the state of motion until and unless some external forces work on it or to some external force stop or make it uh, run again so how can we understand the inertia is then suppose I have given you a football and you have placed the same football in a center of a playground so obviously if you will not touch that football again so it will remain there till it is pushed by anyone so this is known as what Ma inertia so matter obviously has inertia isn't it now another part that matter is affected by gravity obviously you have experienced that if you throw something upward what will happen it will come down automatically to the ground so this clearly shows that there is a force of attraction exerted by what earth and this is known as what gravity so matter is affected by the gravity because it has some mass and it also occupies space so this is one of the characteristics of the matter that it is affected by the gravity so as we have already said that the air air is also what matter so if you have read in your class uh, 6 that we have blank air surrounded the earth so obviously the denser the air so the density of the air is high where at the crust isn't it at the ground so this clearly says that that the air is also what air is also 
affected by the gravity and that's why the density of the air towards the ground is high and another part is that matter cannot be destroyed in all by physical or chemical means total mass of the matter before and after the change will be same isn't it so now come to the next part that is the physical nature of the matter regarding the physical nature of the matter it is believed that either the matter to be continuous just like a block of wood or made up of particle just like sand but second belief was found that matter is made up of very tiny particles and this is known as the particulate nature of matter isn't it so knowing about the size of the matter what we will do we will do an experiment suppose i have given you 100 ml of water in a beaker and you have added what a pinch amount of kmno4 that is potassium permanganate and the color of the potassium permanganate is what violet isn't it so when you will add that pinch of kmno4 in the second beaker suppose it is beaker a b c and d so what we will do at first we will add the pinch amount of beak uh, pinch amount of potassium permanganate in beaker a with 100 ml of water so instantly we will find that the complete color of the water com converted into what violet but if you take 10 ml of the sample from beaker a and transfer it to the beaker b and mark it again 100 ml so what we will found the color get lighter but still the beaker b have the color similarly after 2 to 3 times of transmission of those 10 ml of sample from one beaker to another we will found that the color exists this clearly shows that the matters are very smaller in size we can do the same experiment with a sm uh, with a smelly perfume or detol if you have used 2 to 1 ml of detol instead of the kmno4 or potassium permanganate the smell can be detected even after repeated dilution right or not yes so this clearly shows that what that the matters are of very smaller in size now f uh to find out that the does the matter have space between them or not so what we will do we will come up with another experiment suppose i have given you a beaker and have 100 ml of water so what you will do you just mark the beaker at 100 ml of water and again in the same beaker add minimum 2 to 3 tablespoon of salt or sugar and dilute that so after some time the sugar will be mixed up or say dissolved in the water but if we will find out so if we will try to see what will be our our observ uh, observation that during dissolution the particle of the salt or sugar get into the space between the particles of the water thus they get evenly distributed and there is no noticeable changes right there will be no noticeable changes the the level of the water at first beaker or at the uh, same beaker will be there right this clearly shows that the water have some space between them where the sugar or the salt particle get uh, placed so there will be no noticeable change in the level of the water and this clearly shows that what the matter have space between them now come to the second point of the uh, characteristics of matter that matters or the particles of matters are continuously moving so how can we understand this point suppose the if you have a uh, agarbatti if you have one agarbatti so and if you burn that agarbatti with a match stick after some time what we will found that the agarbatti will bur uh, will start burning and an intense smell had spread the whole room isn't it so what will be the our, our observation that the fragrance spread in the whole room quickly when we light these intense stick incense stick right so why this happen because of diffusion 
Now what the diffusion is? Diffusion is that particular mechanism or say process or one of the uh, property of the matter in which the interpreting of particles of two different types of matter on their own is known as what diffusion that means if we have two different matters suppose in the incense stick or say agarbatti the concentration of the matter was so intense right but in air the concentration of the matter is lighter than the concentration of the matter in agarbatti so when the particles of the agarbatti get mixed up in the air so this particular phenomena is known as what diffusion and obviously when it is mixing why what we have found that it is moving from one point to the another point so from this we can say that the matter is continuously moving we can prove it with the another activity that suppose you have two beaker in one beaker you have 100 milliliter of water and in the second beaker you also have the 100 milliliter of water but you have two different materials such as you have added one drop of ink in the beaker 1 and one drop of honey in the beaker 2 what you will observe that the drop of the ink spread immediately with the water and it takes much less time compared to the honey but both of the water means both the water in the both the beaker get a uniform mixture so this clearly shows that that the matters are continuously moving isn't it so what is the inferences here or what is the result that both the particles in the ink and the honey as well as in the water are in constant motion which result in evenly spreading of both the ink and honey in the water isn't it we can understand this concept with another activity or the brownian motion so brownian the robert brown in the 1827 he have discovered that the particles of the mo uh, matter always move in a zigzag motion that means the zigzag movement of particles suspended in liquid or gas is known as what brownian motion what he did he have observed the movement of pollen grains in the water he had added some pollen grains in the water suppose here it is the water and he have added some pollen grains in the surface of the water and the pollen grains are very lighter and as they are not heavier so they are floating over the surface of the water but they are continuously moving in a zigzag motion so from this he have inferences that the water particles are very small which are negligible to see with the eye but because of the movement of the water particle because of the continuous movement of the water particle what happened they are moving the lighter pollen grains from one place to another place and this this brownian motion is a strong evidence of the continuous movement of matter now understand the effect of temperature on the rate of diffusion as we have understand that what the diffusion is that is a mixture of one part one matter to the another matter from higher concentration to the lower concentration is known as what diffusion suppose we have two different particles one is copper sulfate which is blue in color and another is potassium permanganate which is violet in color and what we do we have two different beaker in one beaker we have hot water and in second beaker we have what cold water right but it is so it is beaker number b and it is beaker number a what we do that we will try to add the copper sulfate in a pinch amount of copper sulfate in beaker a as well as in beaker b but after some time what we will observe that the particle of the copper sulfate go 
deep into the water and turn whole water blue but it will observe in case of beaker a because the beaker a contains the hot water as it contains the hot water the temperature between the water particles was higher and as you have you all know that if the temperature between two particles become higher so they will get the energy or they will acquire the energy and because of that energy they will do what they will not move they will not stay in a particular position and they will start moving suppose we can understand it with a concept that you and your friend are sitting on a bench but in a very summer day will you be acceptable to sit with your friend very closely obviously not because in a very hot day you will try to sit far away from your friend because of the higher temperature but in a very winter day or very cold day what you will do you will uh, sit with your friend in a very close contact isn't it so from this we can understand the behavior of the matters in temperature that if the temperature rise the movement of the matter will high so same thing happens with the copper sulfate in the water that in the hot water the copper sulfate dissolves very fast because of the higher gain in kinetic energy on heating of the water but in the second beaker that in beaker b which was cold which was which contains the cold water the dissolution of the copper sulfate in beaker b was in a slow rate so we from this what is the inference is that that at with the rise in temperature the diffusion increases remember this point now come to some of the other uh, properties like the matters the particles of matters always attract each other so to identify or to understand this particular statement that the particles of matter always attract each other what we do we will take some piece of chalk a piece of rubber band and a nail and what we will do we will try to hammer cut and stretch all those things but what is the observation what we will observe then that if even after hammering the iron piece the nail the iron piece will not get breaked isn't it but after hammering the rubber band will not get breaked but the chalk will get breaked into pieces but the rubber band will be in its own shape but on stretching the rubber band may get elongated so this clearly shows that the particles of the matters have some kinds of attraction between them which resist them to move or to break down into pieces right so this happens only because of the strong force of attraction between the particles so to understand the same concept again we have came up with another activity that uh, suppose we have taken a water tap bucket containing water and a piece of wood knife etc so what we will do that we have open a tap and try to break the stream of the water with your finger or knife so will it be possible to break the stream of the water no so this shows that what the water have some kinds of attraction force between them but will it be possible to break the knife or to break the piece of wood or will it be possible to cut the piece of wood with the knife obviously not because the wood particles have strong force of attraction between them which will not get cut with a knife isn't it now come to the main important characteristics of matter that what we have read that the particles of matters are very very small which is to be seen with the naked eye particles of matters have space between them particles of matters are continuously moving and particles of matters attract each other to a very large volume of water right 
here we have some of the questions which you will find out in your ncrt book so what you have to do you have to do this question and answers and have to comment it in the comment section but here we have a special question that osmosis is a special kind of diffusion as you have already understand the diffusion that is the movement of particle from low concentration to higher concentration is known as what diffusion in liquid and gases so in case of osmosis what happened that is the diffusion occurs but it occurs through a semi permeable membrane suppose you have a resin or a ball isn't it and you have add that ball or say resin into a water so the concentration of the water here is low compared to the concentration of the resin in the water because the concentration of the matters inside the resin is higher compared to the concentration of the water in concentration of the water particles in surrounding so after some time so what we will observe that the resin particles get enlarged or it gets swells so when it swells what it means that is the osmosis occur right here it was a case 1 and here it was a case 2 so the size of the resin particles enlarged so this enlarged size shows that that is the osmosis occur or the diffusion occur that's why the osmosis is known as what a special kind of diffusion isn't it so how can we classify the matter since from in ancient time an ancient indian philosopher have said or divided the matters into living and non living parts which was made up of five basic elements or say panchatatva such as air water earth sky and fire that is vayu prithvi agni akash and jal but in modern day scientists have classified the matter on the basis of physical properties such as uh, on the basis of physical and chemical properties such as in physical properties matters are divided into solid liquid and gas and in chemical properties they are divided into elements compound and mixture so in this next part we will describe about or we will discuss about the solid liquid and gas as well as elements compound and mixture in an elongated video so till now this is the end of the